Good morning. Please take seats. I call the meeting of the General Committee on Political Affairs and Security to order. Colleagues, the agenda for this meeting has been distributed right outside the door. Could I invite you to adopt the agenda? Are there any objections? Without objection, the agenda will be adopted. As this is the final meeting, we, uh, we, we will hold elections for committee officials after we have dealt with the supplementary item. The deadline for nominations was 9 a.m. today and has now passed. Uh, one nomination has been received for the post of chair, Mr. Filippo Lombardi of Switzerland. One nomination has been received for the post of vice chair, Mr. Guillermo Picchi of Italy. And one nomination has been received for the post of rapporteur, Mr. Christian Viganen of Bulgaria. I will return to the election at the close of the meeting, pursuant to the agenda. We now move to consideration of the second supplementary item referred to us by the Standing Committee, entitled Strengthening the Role of the OSCE in Countering Terrorism. There are two amendments to this item. I now give the floor to Mr. Kovalov from the Russian Federation to sponsor this draft resolution. Mr. Kovalov, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, good morning. Good morning and welcome to this hall. I would like to thank once again the organizers of this conference for the excellent working conditions they have provided us with. As you are all keenly aware of the issue of terrorism, Системный и глобальный характер. Стало основным вызовом международной безопасности. Не прекращаются кровопролитные теракты, от которых страдают как близнесточные, так и европейские страны. Наглядным подтверждением стало серия недавних атак в Лондоне, Манчестере, Турции, Афганистане. Беспрецедентно дерзким проявлением террористического произвола стало убийство российского посла в Анкаре. Нашего коллеги, Это страшный список, можно было бы и продолжать, и продолжать достаточно долго. Очевидные тревожные звонки. And add many more events to that list. All of this prompts us to want to cast aside double standards, not to use terrorists in your political and strategic games. It should prompt us to create a common anti-terrorist front and a broad one at that. I'm very pleased to see that our assembly is playing a leading role in this endeavor. We have discussed the need to establish such a front. We discussed it for some time now, and you all supported this idea. It must be said that over the last few years, the OSCE has managed to focus on the bona fide priorities as regards countering terrorism. In particular, the issue of foreign terrorist fighters and the need to counter the spread of terrorist and uh, extremist ideas, whilst uh, establishing partnerships with the civil society, including religious associations, uh, educational and scientific institutions, the media and NGOs. In fact, all of the topics were discussed at the OSCE Counterterrorism Conference on the 23rd and 24th of March, so very recently, at the Security Days Conference as well, on the 27th to 29th of June. The Parliamentary Assembly of the OSCE can and should play a pivotal role in the fight against terrorism. The current uh, conventions dedicated to fighting terrorism, not just OSCE, ones, uh, the UN ones, uh, conventions at the Council of Europe, were all adopted two decades ago. At least uh, the lion's share of them were. Since then, 
Современный терроризм, лидеры его транснациональных группировок жили это 20-летие в ногу со временем. Ими их подручными освоены новейшие технологии воздействия на ум населения, среди которых главной целью являются, конечно же, молодежь, даже подростки, дети. Хорошо известно, как изощренно они промывают мозги пользователям социальных сетей, the lens they go to to brainwash social network users, enlisting new recruits, getting people over onto their side. So the existing counter-terrorism conventions предугадать тенденции развития терроризма в дальнейшем перспективе. Эти лаконы требуются заполнить немедленно. Именно в этих целях мной вносится проект резолюции усиления роли ОСЕ в противодействии всего, проект конвенции направлен на предотвращение использования руководителями международного терроризма социальных сетей для вербовки молодежи предоставления as a mouthpiece for promoting violence, and also we want uh, participating states, uh, members of the OECPA, to root out any other conditions conducive uh, to terrorist activities, uh, including in territories where they have uh, already established themselves and are trying to impact the population. I want to underscore that uh, the draft resolution seeks to fight terrorism in its modern form. It aims to consolidate international efforts with the OCPA playing a leading role. Thank you very much for all of your support. Many colleagues came to me. They uh, told me that uh, I could count on them and that they will, would support uh, this document. By way of conclusion, I'd like to say that uh, Ms. Christine Mutnin, our president, has decided to establish a new committee on uh, fighting terrorism, and I hope that will uh, foster our efforts to counter this scourge. Thank you very much for your gracious attention. I hope you will support the resolution. It's very important for us to bolster the role and the credibility of the OECPA, first and foremost. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kovalev. The floor is now open for debate. The time limit for speeches is three minutes. Uh, if there are an excessive number of members wishing to speak, it may be necessary later on to reduce the time limit to try to accommodate as many people as possible. But as of now, we have seven persons who have asked to be placed on the list. Mr. Grant of the United Kingdom, is first, and sir, you are recognized for three minutes. Thank you very much, Chair. Can I first of all echo the comments of some of my colleagues in expressing our appreciation for all the messages of sympathy and solidarity we've received from around the world following a number of very serious terrorist incidents in London and in Manchester. There are three brief points that I want to make. First of all, could I ask anyone referring in particular to the activities of Daesh not to refer to these people as Muslims or as Islamic or as Islamist? Because what they're doing is an abomination against the teachings of the Islamic faith. They do not deserve to have their crimes dignified by reference to a faith which has been a force for such good around the world for so many centuries. And I believe that if we continue to attach the name Islamic to these crimes, it acts perversely as an encouragement to disillusioned young people uh, to believe that there is something sacred in what is happening. These crimes are an abomination against any faith. They should not be dignified by association with Islam or indeed with any other creed. The second point I want to make is that we have to be careful about how we define a terrorist. A terrorist is not defined as such because of what they claim to want to achieve, but because of what they do in order to achieve it. There are many legitimate, if arguable, political aims that are used as a, a motivation or an excuse for terrorism. Um, in my childhood days, people used violence to try to change the constitution of the island of Ireland. People have used violence claiming to be in support of the establishment of a Palestinian nation. 
in support of a Kurdish nation and in older times in support of the establishment of an Israeli nation. All of these are perfectly legitimate political views to support or to oppose. What makes the person a terrorist is that they depart from legitimate, peaceful, democratic means and turn to the ways of violence. That distinction is important because we've seen some comments here this week where governments have attempted to brand people as terrorists because of the views that they hold when there is no evidence at all that they have even considered the use of violence to promote those views. Seeking to bring down a government because you disagree with its policies is not terrorism, it's democracy. And we have to be very, very clear that we will support legitimate democratic activity, even if we don't necessarily agree with the political views that, that, that this activity is being used to promote. My final comment um, is to say that in giving more powers to states in order to protect our liberties from terrorism, we have to be very, very careful indeed that the very liberties that the state is supposed to be protecting are not taken away from us. And that means, for example, surveillance of electronic communication can be justified, but it must be proportionate, and it cannot be used as an excuse for the state to spy on the innocent and legitimate activities of its citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grant. I now call on our next speaker, Mr. Guliev of Azerbaijan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. At the outset, I would like to thank our distinguished colleague, Mr. Kavalev, for his tireless efforts to strengthen the role of the OECPA in countering terrorism. I also join colleagues in commending con condolences to the countries that recently suffered from terrorist attacks. Terrorist attacks, regardless of their motivation, constitute serious crimes and must be condemned and prosecuted. We have to fight all terror organizations with equal determination without double standards, political, ideological, or whatsoever preferences. Any deviation in this regard would seriously undermine anti-terror activities. Increasing convergence of discourses of terrorism, radicalization, and extremism, and inseparable link between terrorism and aggressive separatism proves that exclusive use of traditional military and law enforcement responses to mitigate, to mitigate the threat of terrorism cannot be sufficient. The root causes of terrorism and conditions that are conducive to, it must be identified and addressed. Financing of terrorism should remain at the center of the counter-terrorism efforts. It is important to counter and suppress the finance of terrorism as it facilitates to the recruitment efforts and strengthen the operational capacities to organize and carry out terrorist acts. While countering terrorism and extremist ideologies, the international community must also invest in fostering dialogue, understanding, and tolerance. We must attach primary importance to the promotion of education and inclusive societies. It is our responsibility to reject and fight any ideology that promotes ethnic or religious superiority and is based on ethnic incompatibility of the people. I believe that adoption of draft resolution will be an important contribution to international efforts in above measured directions, and I invite the Assembly to support the supplementary item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Mr. Ducarme of Belgium. Merci, Monsieur le, le Président. Thank you, Comme, Mr. Chairman. Uh, bon nombre de pays ici, la, Just la like Belgique, uh, uh, le 22 mars quite a few countries here, on the 22nd of March uh, 2016, uh, Belgium was hit by Daesh. Uh, it, we were hit uh, by Islamist terrorists. Uh, Comme it goes without saying ici, that uh, just like uh, other countries in the group today uh, uh, are uh, staunchly committed to combating terrorism. Thus, we were very interested to read the proposal ici, from our distinguished Russian colleagues. And just like many other countries in the room, we are part of the international coalition. Daesh. 
nous partageons bon nombre de points de vue qui ont été euh, exprimés par euh, la proposition de de la fédération russe Many tant par rapport à la nécessité euh, d'encourager un certain nombre d'états à compléter regards, uh, leur arsenal législatif anti-terroriste uh, à partager uh, une boîte à outils tools, utile en la matière à coopérer, à voir les pays coopérer en la matière nous soulignons d'ailleurs combien le rôle euh, de l'Union européenne en matière de coopération, d'échange d'informations a été euh, la démonstration d'avancées euh, conséquentes, importantes, qui donne aujourd'hui euh, aux pays de l'Union européenne davantage d'outils pour lutter ensemble contre euh, cette dynamique destructrice portée par euh, Daesh. Si nous partageons bon nombre de points de vue qui sont émis par euh, la proposition russe, nous avons néanmoins un certain nombre de réserves. Et euh, elles sont Notable. Nous avons euh, évidemment, et, et c'est un problème qui se pose, euh, nous, avons pu, nous avons pu le constater dans un certain nombre de pays européens, il s'agit de la relation aux médias dans le cadre de l'information qui doit être couverte ou non par euh, les médias dans le cadre euh, de tentatives d'attentats euh, terroristes. Nous avons des, des réserves par rapport à à l'expression et, et, et la volonté au départ de l'OSC de demander aux médias des restrictions en matière d'information. Euh, nous avons pas mal de réserves par rapport à ça. Nous avons aussi euh, un Some élément qui semble essentiel à défendre et qui ne se trouve pas dans cette proposition de résolution. C'est la nécessité, dans le contexte actuel, de voir préserver l'essentiel équilibre entre les libertés des citoyens et leur sécurité, une donnée que nous ne retrouvons pas et que nous estimons qu'il doit être défendue également. Merci. Merci, et nous pensons qu'il doit être inclusé. Merci. Merci, et notre prochain speaker est M. Hudson, des États-Unis. Monsieur, vous êtes reconnu. Merci, M. le Président. Le challenge du terrorisme est un des partagés par tous les OSCE participants et un des partagés qui nous demande certainement un effort collectif et coopératif de tous nous. Nous We appreciate our colleague from the Russian Federation for offering this resolution, a text that forces us to consider the way in which our prospective countries approach this problem so that any collaboration between us can be built on the basis of shared understanding. We appreciate several positive elements in this text, including expressions of solidarity with victims, recognition of the need to ensure guilty parties are held accountable, and emphasis on addressing the recruitment of potential terrorists, including the foreign terrorist fighter problem. However, some parts of this resolution cause us some concern. For example, we believe that any approach to countering violent extremism and terrorism that is based on restricting the human rights and fundamental freedoms of citizens, including the freedom of expression and the freedom of assembly, will be counterproductive. In that spirit, we'll be introducing a number of amendments to this resolution in order to align it with what we believe to be a consensus on best practices in this field. Without these amendments, it would be difficult for our delegation to support this text. In addition to the formal amendments on key principles that we will present separately, I'd like to call attention to two other areas we find problematic, though not fatal, to the underlying text. We would not recommend listing specific cities affected by attacks in the opening paragraph, given the sad reality that any such listing is bound to be incomplete and therefore could undercut the very solidarity this resolution seeks to support and is likely to be ra rapidly overtaken by events. Secondly, we're concerned about the ambiguous language in paragraph 8, including a reference to, quote, double standards, and would ask the rapporteur for clarification on this point before supporting any amended text. Uh, but again, these are concerns. These are not, uh, we do not consider them to be fatal to the underlying text. We just uh, thought it was important to raise these issues here before we proceed. I urge the author to support our constructive amendments uh, that we'll be presenting uh, next in, in the agenda in order to arrive at a text that can garner the greatest possible support from all the OSCE delegations present here. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Ms. Sederfeldt of Sweden. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I do first want to express my condolence for all those victims and their families who have fell off a four terrorist attack. Uh, it's a very important issue that have been raised from Russia here. 
uh, and I'm grateful for that. I think and believe there is a need for international cooperation. Terrorism is not an issue for each country to, uh, de uh, to uh, act against by themselves. But there is also a lack of several important issues that have been mentioned by other delegates here. It, for example, where is the freedom in this paper? We have to act against terrorism, but we do also have to defend the freedoms, the freedom of speech, the freedom of meeting, the freedom of uh, joining uh, organizations. Where is that? We shouldn't start to act against terrorism and the result will be that we get a lack of all those values that are so important. And I really hope and I wish the OSCE ad hoc working group on terrorism good luck for the future because they will have a very, very important job to do. So we as uh, OSCE Parliamentarian Assembly can be a leader acting actor when it comes to international cooperation against terrorism. I do also want to mention one other thing that when I read this paper and I was first actually very pleased because it says respect the sovereignty, the territorial integrity and political independence. Could I read this? Really to see that the Russians will respect the Swedish air territorium, that Russia will respect the political independence of their neighbor countries. Can I read this, that Russia will respect the territorial integrity of its neighbor countries where Russia are acting? If that's the case, this is a really good paper, a step forward for respect in the OSCE region. But I must say that I need some more about the freedom and our democratic rights as citizens in OSCE. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And our next speaker is Mr. Cosido of Spain. Muchas gracias, Presidente. En esta Asamblea Now, hemos tenido assembly, debates muy intensos we, we eh, sobre Ucrania, sobre la situación en Turquía, sobre otros Turkey, conflictos, e incluso sobre el matrimonio homosexual. Pero creo que si hay un punto donde te podemos, tenemos la capacidad de construir un consenso sólido como Asamblea Parlamentaria, es precisamente en la lucha contra el terrorismo. Porque ahí no solo tenemos un interés común, sino que tenemos principios sobre los que, que compartimos para enfrentarnos a esta amenaza. Quiero por eso expresar mi total apoyo a la creación de este grupo ad hoc, que se contiene también en la resolución, porque creo que puede hacer un trabajo importante en la lucha contra el terrorismo. De hecho, yo marcaría tres líneas de trabajo que me parecen esenciales para este grupo. En primer lugar, creo que sería muy útil si este grupo puede trabajar en la elaboración de un estatuto de la víctima el reconocimiento de algunos derechos que sean inherentes, que sean básicos para cualquier víctima del terrorismo en cualquiera de los Estados miembros de esta organización. En segundo lugar, sería muy útil también si esta Asamblea fuera capaz de avanzar no solo en una definición común del terrorismo, cosa que a veces no es, es muy compleja, sino también en una definición del marco legal de lucha contra el terrorismo, eh, incluyendo ese equilibrio, no siempre fácil, entre libertad y seguridad, entre ser eficaces en la lucha contra el terrorismo, respetando escrupulosamente nuestros estados de derecho, los derechos humanos eh, y nuestros principios democráticos. Y por último, creo que también sería de enorme utilidad, creo que esta Asamblea sería, haría un, un trabajo importante en la elaboración de un mensaje político, de un discurso contra la radicalización. Eh, no solamente hay que combatir 
a quienes cometen acciones terroristas, hay que combatir la ideología, el discurso del odio que se sustenta de alguna forma ese, ese terrorismo. Y es un trabajo esencialmente político y creo que esta asamblea como asamblea parlamentaria tiene no solo la legitimidad sino una capacidad muy importante para hacerlo. Permítanme que con toda humildad diga que España es un caso de éxito en la lucha contra el terrorismo. Derrotamos una banda terrorista, ETA, que causó casi mil víctimas mortales a lo largo de muchos años en mi país. Con las armas del Estado de Derecho, de la convicción democrática, del consenso político, de la voluntad social, de la determinación de la sociedad, conseguimos derrotar al terrorismo. Para nosotros será un placer poder compartir esta experiencia. Gracias. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Shufrich of Ukraine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Distinguished colleagues, it goes without saying that I want to express our heartfelt condolences to all uh, those who lost their lives as a result of the terrorist acts in the UK, in France, in Germany, in Belgium. Those who lost their lives in the UK, in France, in Germany, when the flight to Petersburg, Visa, 9268, and of course, the family of the Russian ambassador went down, and also the family of the Russian ambassador went down. Every hot spot on our planet is a potential breeding ground, training ground for terrorists. And it pains me to see that one of such platforms, which people are returning from, returning from, and then taking part in. Special operations are being arrested in Europe and elsewhere. That uh, my home country, Ukraine, the Donbass, is one such uh, training ground. I've taken the floor a number of times to say that in Europe we need to do everything possible to make sure that we stop killing that people no longer kill. Of course, there are no full frontal battles going on, but people are still dying on a daily basis. Thankfully, not by the hundreds, as in 2014, in fewer numbers, but they are still dying. Of course, on both sides of the confrontation, there are weapons. The weapons are being fired. Ukrainian state today is not interested in peaceful settlement of this conflict. What do we need in order to implement the Minsk agreements? There are three things that need to be done. There are three things that need to be done. There are three things that need to be done. There are three things that need to be done. There are three things that need to be done. There are three things that need to be done. There are three things that need to be done. There are three things that need to be done. И закон о специальном статусе. Я имею право это говорить, потому что я являюсь автором закона про амнистию для активистов Майдана, а тогда их тоже называли еще террористами, для того, чтобы начать диалог с теми, кто взял в руки оружие и восстал против легитимной власти в Киеве в ноябре и декабре 2013 года. И сегодня этот вопрос еще не закрыт. Я приветствую активность Соединенных Штатов Америки и решение, I welcome the United States cooperation and the fact that Mr. Volker, who was the head of the Department of Defense, has been appointed as a special representative. He will be taking part in consultations and negotiations and will facilitate the implementation of the Minsk agreements. I hope that the visit which will be tomorrow to visit the State Secretary Tillerson and Mr. Volker will form the Ukrainian leadership to take the decisions for him. Я подчеркиваю, я отделяю украинский народ от украинской власти. Украинский народ хочет жить в мире. К сожалению, если в 2014 году 74% жителей Донбасса хотели быть в единой Украине, то сегодня уже только 21%. И мы сегодня должны бороться за то, чтобы ментально эти люди вернулись for the mindsets of these people, so that in their minds they return back into the Ukrainian fold. But the current leadership has no interest in that. Now tell me this, the Russian State Duma или Конгресс Соединенных Штатов, или Бундестаг должны принимать законы, которые взяла на себя, принять украинская власть. Нет, это должна сделать Верховная Рада Украины. Если это не будет сделано, перспективы мирного регулирования не будет. Будут только спекуляции на этой теме. Спасибо за внимание. Boridis of Greece. Thank you, and um, 
Let me congratulate uh, Mr. Kovalev and the Russian Federation for this initiative uh, to propose this supplementary item. Actually, one of their uh, wishes in this item has already been uh, fulfilled, uh, and I'm talking about the creation uh, in, in our organization of the ad hoc committee for uh, terrorism uh, uh, and dealing with this huge problem. Now, I think that there are some issues, I've spoken uh, about two of them, that we can all easily agree. That is uh, the harmonization of uh, legislation. And uh, also, I think we can very easily agree in the need for cooperation and exchange of information among the securities agencies in order to combat terrorism. Let me add two more points that I think also are quite um, I, you know, without a problem. Um, the G20 yesterday issued um, a, a, an announcement, um, their decisions and their wish to battle, to, to tackle the issue of financing of terrorist groups. So this is again a direction that I think the international community and us, we should follow. We should try and think how we're going to stop financing and trace the money that really um, breed the terrorism. And another thing is, again, uh, we have expressed, and it is actually being expressed in uh, the work that Margarita has um, done, which is uh, tightening the border controls and the migratory flows. This is also an issue of security at a certain point. So I think that these are quite a challenge and whether it's a problem. I've heard some uh, worries that I do understand about the the freedom of expression and where one should draw the line. But now again, in that issue, let's also be clear. Yes, of course, that we should protect and we do protect and we respect freedom of expression, but we also understand that this is not unlimited. We have limitations in our legislative, uh, in, in, in our legislation of freedom of expression. A classic one is, of course, libel, defamation, so, you know, you cannot say whatever you want. Another quite classical is hate speech, racist speech, xenophobic speech. I mean, this is not allowed. So in that sense, uh, of course, we can have limitation in the freedom of speech. And where we're going to draw the line, where exactly we're going to draw the line, I think that this is going to be debated, but for sure. One cannot argue that one should be free to speak and organize terrorist acts that they are going to kill people and that you cannot interfere into that kind of freedom. This kind of freedom does not exist. It should not be allowed, even if it is simply a speech. So, uh, of course, we should be very careful. Of course, we should respect speech. Of course, we should not criminalize ideologies or ideas. But on the other hand, it is very clear that we should do something about using the freedom of speech in order to organize the killing of people. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Mr. Voronetsky of Belarus. Sir, you are recognized. Mr. Chairman, Terrorism, in all of its forms and manifestations, one of the most serious threats to international peace and security. And for that reason, it goes without saying that the Belarusian delegation would like to once again welcome the leaders taken to establish under OSCE, Auspices and Ad Hoc Working Group on Terrorism. We hope that the work of this Working Group will uh, beef up our assembly's efforts to fight this uh, 21st century scourge, which uh, has resulted in the loss of thousands of lives over the last few years. I want to thank uh, the special representative of the OSCE on anti-terrorism, Mr. Kovalev, for his uh, very active efforts to bring the assembly's attention to this uh, pressing issue. Уважаемым господином Ковалевым весьма актуальный и содержательный проект резолюции 
to a this uh, very substantial draft resolution on strengthening the role of the OECE in countering terrorism. Thank you. Thank you. And the chair now recognizes Ms. Moore of Canada. Merci beaucoup. Euh, Thank you very much. I have some et, questions uh, about uh, para 22 qui serait librement consenti dans les médias. Et je me demandais ce qui était derrière l'esprit de, de mon collègue russe qui a présenté la résolution. Uh, J'aimerais savoir si c'était des mesures comme celles qui sont préconisées par certains experts qui disent uh, selon lesquelles, uh, lorsqu'il y a des attentats, qu'il ne faut, uh, à, à mesure que le, 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 le terroriste est neutralisé, arrêté ou décédé, qu'il faut absolument arrêter de lui donner l'importance dans les médias. Si c'est ce genre de mesures-là, je peux être en accord. De nombreux experts ont dit que il faut arrêter de donner de l'importance à ceux qui commettent ces gestes-là et qui sont neutralisés. Il faut arrêter d'en parler pour ne pas leur donner les noms, les surnoms. We should stop uh, giving people their names, giving them monikers and nicknames. We should focus on the victims. Are these the limitations on the media what uh, our colleague had in mind, preventing the media from advertising, advertising the work of terrorists? Or perhaps my Russian colleague uh, was thinking of something else. So I had some concerns about that and I wanted to express them to colleagues. Thank you very much. And we um, have no further requests to speak. Does anyone else wish to speak? If not, we'll move to consideration of amendments. Yes. Um, the delegate from Kyrgyzstan is recognized. Здравствуйте, уважаемые коллеги. Кыргызская делегация тоже поддерживает проект резолюции, предложенный Николаем Ковалевым об усилении роли ОБСЕ в противодействии терроризму. И также создание в рамках парламентской ассамблеи ОБСЕ комитет по противодействию терроризму, который мог бы содействовать сближению подходов государств участников в борьбе с террористической угрозой и координации действий на данном направлении. Также хотелось бы отметить в этом направлении опыт и опыт Ковалева Николая, господина Ковалева Николая. И мы поддерживаем его и его резолюцию полностью. Кыргызская делегация. Спасибо. Are there others wishing to speak before we move to the amendment process? Yes, the delegate from Italy. You are recognized. Grazie, Presidente. Thanks, Chair. Anche la delegazione italiana si riconosce nella opportunità di questo supplementary item che il collega della delegazione russa ha portato alla nostra attenzione. Non mi sembra, ma lo vedremo poi nel corso degli emendamenti, che vi siano da correggere delle impostazioni. La lotta contro il terrorismo è una lotta per la libertà. Conosco la durissima lotta che nel nostro Paese abbiamo fatto contro il terrorismo. In quella lotta non abbiamo mai fatto venire meno le garanzie della libertà dal diritto e dalla procedura penale. Quindi, pur pronunciandomi probabilmente a favore degli emendamenti che hanno annunciato i colleghi americani, credo comunque che approvare questa supplementary item e dotare la nostra Assemblea e più in generale l'OSCE di una commissione ad hoc sul terrorismo sia più che necessario. Ci abbiamo già provato, io ricordo di aver partecipato a San Pietroburgo qualche mese dopo il terribile 11 settembre americano a un seminario sul terrorismo. Come si dice giustamente nella mozione, non si tratta di sovrapporre in questo o quell'organismo della comunità internazionale 
una sempre nuova definizione di terrorismo. Si tratta di tenere presente che il terrorismo moderno, il terrorismo che si è scatenato, diciamo, dall'11 settembre, è soprattutto un terrorismo suicida. Quindi, nel pieno rispetto delle garanzie della libertà, dobbiamo cercare di andare a stanare anche i mandanti e probabilmente sarebbe il caso di ampliare il ruolo della Corte Penale Internazionale, di cui il nostro pieno accoglimento dell'iniziativa del collega Kovalev. Grazie, Mr. Compagna. Now, are there others who wish to speak? And at this point we will close debate and move to consideration of the amendments submitted to the draft resolution. Copies of the amendments have been made available. The correct version of the latest copy is entitled AS17SI12 Amend. In discussing amendments, I will call the proposer of the amendment or amendments first, according to the rules. Then I will call on any opponent of the amendment. Speakers will be asked to observe a one minute uh, time limit, and then I will ask the sponsor of the draft resolution, Mr. Kovalov, if he has not already spoken for his opinion. Opinion. Following that, I shall put the amendments to the vote. The first amendment is amendment number one by Mr. Hudson, and I call on Mr. Hudson from the United States to propose his amendment number one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Amendment 1 revises paragraph number 15. Um, I would like to thank all of my colleagues uh, who have expressed support for this amendment, particularly uh, delegates from Hungary and Romania who have co-sponsored this amendment. I appreciate your support very much. The text I'm proposing brings the text closer to traditional language agreed in the OSCE context, including the OSCE Hamburg ministerial, ministerial last December. The initial text risks minimizing the positive contributions of civil society and also miscitting the positive contributions of the media and the private sector to countering extremism and terrorism. In short, we should not minimize the crucial roles of these actors. The OSCE reports that it rightly involves these stakeholders as much as possible in its anti-terrorism activities and promotes dialogue and cooperation in addressing counterterrorism issues. In particular, through public-private partnerships. This includes work on the prevention of abuse of nonprofit organizations for financing of terrorism while safeguarding freedom of association. These actors help us advance OSCE's comprehensive approach to security, which underlines the effective counterterrorism measures and protections of human rights are complementary to our mutual enforcement. So I ask my colleagues to please uh, support this amendment. Does anyone wish to speak against amendment number one? Um, if not, what is Mr. Kovalev's opinion of the amendment? Distinguished colleagues, you know that I, in my capacity as the special representative on anti-terrorism, have always been in favor of establishing a broad-based international coalition for countering terrorism. I think that this amendment is a key step on the way to our cooperation, to further dialogue. So I am in favor of the amendment. I think it uh, improves the text. And what's most important, it attests to the fact that we stand ready to cooperate. I think uh, such cooperation within the framework of the working group we're establishing uh, would be most effective. Thank you. All right. I shall now put amendment number one to the vote. Will all those in favor of amendment one please raise their voting cards? Thank you. You may lower your cards. Will all those against please raise their voting cards? And are there abstentions? Thank you. And amendment number one is adopted. I now call uh, uh, one moment while I consult with staff.
Right. Uh, there will be an, um, a proposed oral amendment later, but at this at this point, it is in order to call on Mr. Hudson from the United States to propose Amendment 2. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment is to paragraph 21. I'm concerned that the original language could be seen as justifying the use of overly broad definitions of extremism or terrorism to crack down on freedom of expression and internet freedom. This approach is contrary to our shared commitments to fundamental freedoms and the principles of the OSCE. My amendment recognizes that free expression and the use of new technologies are also tools to fight terrorism by creating social cohesion and expressing alternative narratives. The OSCE representative on freedom of the media recently offered key principles on this issue. She advised only restricting content if it can be shown that such content intends to incite imminent violence and is likely to incite such violence. In an effort to be constructive, I'm offering language that our governments agreed at, uh, agreed to at the 2015 OSCE ministerial in Belgrade on this issue. Let me close by emphasizing that my conviction that human rights and fundamental freedoms are the sources of our greatest strength and are fighting as terrorism and other transnational threats, and not, as some might have you believe, sources of vulnerability and insecurity. I ask my colleagues to please support this amendment, and I yield thank, back. Thank you, Mr. Hudson. Who wishes to speak against the amendment number two? If no one wishes to speak, Mr. Kovalev, what is your view on the amendment? Спасибо, господин председатель. Уважаемые коллеги, я хочу поблагодарить нашего коллегу Хадсона, потому что речь идет, конечно же, о продолжении того взаимодействия, которое, как мне кажется, уже началось и то, что улучшается редакция тех или иных, я приветствую. Thank you very much. We will now put Amendment 2 to the vote. Will all those in favor of Amendment 2 please raise their voting cards? Thank you. You may lower your cards. Those opposed to Amendment 2, please raise your voting cards. And thank you. And are there abstentions? <coughs> thank you. And Amendment number 2 is adopted. Now, um, Mr. Ducarme of Belgium has uh, informed the chair that he has an oral amendment to be proposed. Um, let, um, so let's first hear the amendment, and I understand. Mr. Chairman, if you like, I can uh, submit my oral amendment, which is justified by the fact that quite a few of us during the debate entre les libertés Quite a few of us mentioned that essential balance between individuals and uh, public de la freedoms and uh, la lutte contre le terrorisme. Et the security that's necessary to combat terrorism. The amendments donc, we have just considered si did not touch upon this issue. Therefore, I think that if we do want to strike a balance in the bon text, a good text, text containing the salient points put forward by the Russian delegation, I think it's worth having this amendment. Para 24 invites l'équilibre entre l'exercice des libertés individuelles et publiques et celui de la sécurité essentielle à la lutte contre le terrorisme. The security voilà. necessary to combat terrorism. Full stop. Sir, would you once again simply read the, the text? Mais si vous voulez, Monsieur le Président, if you wish, Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to do that. Invites entre l'exercice participating states to guarantee a balance between the exercise of individual and public liberties and that of security necessary for fighting terrorism. Thank you. Now, an oral amendment has been proposed. According to our rules, we must have unanimous consent for such an amendment to be considered. Is there objection to the consideration of this amendment? 
There being none, the amendment will be considered. And, sir, you are recognized for another 60 seconds if you would like to uh, speak in favor of your amendment, which is now before us. Je vais réexpliquer avec plaisir, M. Yes. le Président. Euh, nous Gladly, avons été euh, très nombreux dans la salle à commenter cette bonne proposition de la Fédération russe. Euh, nous souhaitions la, la nuancer, euh, retrouver des éléments d'équilibre euh, sur lesquels nous avions euh, des réserves quant à l'absence. Et donc, nous souhaitons, je pense, que nous avons été nombreux euh, à nous exprimer dans ce cadre-là, dans la période que nous traversons, le contexte que nous traversons, extrêmement difficile, euh, combien il est essentiel que nous luttions context. aussi au-delà de la lutte contre le terrorisme, que nous luttions pour, pour, pour nos libertés, pour préserver nos libertés individuelles, pour préserver nos libertés publiques et garantir cet équilibre entre la mise en place d'un certain nombre de dispositifs de sécurité supplémentaires essentiels, mais le fait également de préserver les libertés citoyennes, les libertés individuelles, les libertés publiques public, individual, and citizens' uh, liberties. Thank you, sir. Would anyone wish to speak against the oral amendment? Mr. Kovalov, what is your view on the oral amendment? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for giving me the floor. It's very difficult uh, to draft when we have oral amendments, but uh, it seems that it is necessary. So I call on colleagues to support this amendment, although I did want to say one thing. Of course, the resolution I've drafted focuses first and foremost on countering terrorism, pooling our efforts to counter terrorism, the rights and freedoms of our citizens. We will, of course, be fighting for them, but that's the object of other resolutions where we will delve into the details of that. We don't accept that uh, countering terrorism can be used as a pretext for trampling any rights or freedoms, including on the internet uh, when social networks are in play. That is one of our aims, but that is the subject of other special resolutions. We will, of course, be setting forth all of those rights and freedoms and defending them. Thank you very much. I will now move to the vote on the oral amendment. Um, would those in favor of the oral amendment please raise their voting cards? And thank you. You may lower your cards. Those opposed, please raise your voting cards. And thank you. Are there any abstentions? And thank you. And the oral amendment is adopted. This concludes consideration of amendments. Thank you. I propose that we now formally move to a vote on the draft resolution as amended. Are you ready to vote on final adoption of the draft resolution as amended? <laughs> Would those in favor of adopting the draft resolution as amendment please raise their voting cards? Thank you. You may lower your cards. Those opposed, please raise your voting cards. And are there abstentions? And the draft resolution is agreed to. Congratulations. And um, having concluded the matter of the um, supplemental item, we now come to the election of committee officers for the 27th annual se uh, session of the assembly. Nominations closed at 9 a.m. as I already announced. The International Secretariat has informed me that the following nominations have been received in the table office. For chair, Mr. Filippo Lombardi of Switzerland. Mr. Lombardi, would you please stand? Congratulations. For Vice Chair, Mr. Guillermo Piki. Thank you. 
and for rapporteur, Mr. Christian Viganen of Bulgaria. And I am required to put it this way. As the position of chair is not contested, I declare the nominee for the chair, Mr. Filippo Lombardi of Switzerland, elected by acclamation in accordance with Rule 36.5. Likewise, as the position of vice chair is not contested, I declare the nominee for that position, Mr. Guillermo Picchi of Italy, elected by acclamation in accordance with Rule 36.5. Likewise, as the position of rapporteur is not contested, I declare the nominee for that position, Mr. Christian Viganen of Bulgaria, elected by acclamation in accordance with Rule 36.5. And once again, congratulations to the new officers. This concludes the work of the first committee for the 26th annual session. Colleagues, I would like to thank you all for your dedication to this forum and for the productive dialogue we have conducted over our time together. Thank you also on a matter of personal privilege. Uh, thank you for allowing me to serve as your chair for the last three sessions. I would like to thank our interpreters without whom we could not have had such a productive session. Thank you, Many sir. thanks also to the excellent pro professionals of the OSCE Parliamentary Assembly Secretariat for their hard work in organizing our meetings. Is there further business to come before the committee? If not, the committee will next meet in the winter meeting in Vienna in February. And if there's nothing further, I now declare the 2017 annual meeting of the OSCE Parliamentary Assembly's General Committee on Political Affairs and Security closed. Thank you.